What's going on YouTube? It's your boy, Mr. Pyro, and today we're looking at a 2000 GMC Jimmy, and uh, the car belongs to my sister. It's a 4x4. The car belongs to my sister, and she said that uh, the brakes were sounding and feeling really funny. So, uh, what I did was, <clears throat> I decided to jack it up, I took the tire off, uh, I put a, um, <clears throat> a jack stand underneath the A-frame so that way we can um, further inspect this bad boy and make it look, you know, see what we got working over here. So uh, I'm going to take you real quick down here um, and you can see what's going on, okay? Give me just a quick second, flip you around. All right, so here we are. Uh, this is uh, the brake caliper, this is your brake rotor, and this right here, this is a bad brake. So as you can see, this is the part that's supposed to ride along the rotor, and it's completely gone, okay? So this piece here, this is uh, the other side of the brake pad that's still there, and still good. Now, if you look inside of here, you can see the caliper. Let me see here. You can see the caliper in there. And that's rubbing against the brake rotor right there. So, that's no good. <clears throat> so, what we're going to do is, uh, we, we are going to replace the brakes, the rotor, and the caliper and we're also going to do a full system bleed uh, so that way everything is going to be 100% um, safe because <laughs> that's the aim of the game right is to be safe so um, I order parts on Rock Auto and uh, new rotor new caliper new brake pads came out to about I think it was like 60 bucks so if you go to El Vato Zone uh, one brake caliper is $75. So as you can see, I already saved some money. The only downfall with ordering parts on Rock Auto is that you don't get a warranty. Um, so just keep that in mind when you order all your parts on Rock Auto. And um, yeah, so as soon as those parts come in, uh, I'll take you through the process of uh, ripping everything out and replacing everything. And um, well, as always, we'll be back. So as soon as parts come in, I'll show you, and then we can go from there. Thanks. Bye. All right. So we're back here in the garage. Um, I got all the parts. <clears throat> uh, I actually replaced everything. I completely forgot I was making this video for everybody. And uh, my sister was here. She was very distracting. She wanted to have this long conversation, which was okay. Um, but I already did the driver's side, uh, which was the one that was affected by everything. So, my bad. Uh, but during the bleed process, I did find that the passenger side had a hole in the boot where the uh, pistons come out, the caliper pistons. So, I had to replace those anyways. So, I ordered new parts for that side and uh, I'm glad I did because everything down there is just totally rusted and we're just going to have to fix it and take care of it. You know what I'm saying? So um, here's what I found out. I think the last time we spoke was uh, I found the brake pad sitting on the ground and uh, I was going to go through the motions of disassembling everything and making everything uh, fixable again or, or uh, making everything correct. So here's where we're at, okay? So right now... You can see that um, it's all brand new. I had to buy a new caliper, new brake pads, and a new rotor. And uh, let me show you what the old one looked like. So this is the old uh, caliper here. And uh, this was on the back of the brake pad. And uh, yeah, it's really, really bad. So the brake pad came off and was rubbing on the caliper pistons. You see how it's supposed to be straight and uh, now they're 
angled a little bit because of all the rubbing. You can see there's crud inside of there. Um, it was a bad deal. I don't know how that happened, but uh, I'm glad I caught it and I, I'm glad we fixed it before something happened that was serious, really bad. So this is what it's supposed to look like. And this is what it looks like now because uh, obviously it's, it was rubbing in there, see? And um, pretty bad. You can see lots of grooves and material missing. That's a lot of material to be missing. So, But uh, this one's done. Uh, I just left the wheel off because it's easier to do the, um, the brake bleed while everything's off. So... Even going back here to these tires, I will take these tires off and then uh, I will bleed the brakes there. So what I ended up buying was this uh, brake disc right here and then uh, these come to in a set. So, so I have new brake pads here and it came with the hardware kit when I bought the caliper, which is really nice. So this caliper is uh, considered a semi-loaded caliper and uh, this just means that it doesn't have brake pads in it. But, as you can see, it comes with uh, the mount bracket, the caliper itself. Uh, this piece comes off here, which are dust boots, which normally you'd buy separate. So that's really cool. Uh, and also uh, comes with a brake, brake, uh, brake hose bolt, right? And those take banjo bolts, which I was talking about earlier. And uh, these are those banjo bolts. All they are like a copper washer. And um, so yeah, so you put those on there and they crush and take the form of the caliper. So that's really nice. Um, but first and foremost, I'm gonna try to make this video a little shorter because the last video I made was really long and um, it didn't get very many views. And I think it's because it was so dang long. Um, so here's the tire. I put it all back together for you because I wanted to show you the whole process, okay? So we're gonna go through uh, the whole process and um, like I said, I'm gonna try to make it quick because uh, I don't wanna take up a lot of your time and uh, maybe, maybe 35, 45 minute videos are just way too long, okay? So uh, once again, here we go. Let's get into it. I'm gonna set you down on my little stand over here. I'm gonna start taking off this tool, uh, this uh, tire here. And um, these are three quarter inch nuts on the outside of this tire. Uh, when we get in there on the caliper bolts, those are gonna be 18 millimeter bolts and you can use uh, wrenches, sockets, whatever you'd like. To get the bracket off <clears throat> of the caliper or off of the, um, the wheel hub assembly there, uh, you will need an 18 millimeter. And I use one that's um, like an offset, see like this here. And uh, this really helps a lot because uh, Sometimes when you use your uh, ratchet wrench, it might get stuck, as I found out. So, got my tools there. I got my light set up here, and uh, I'm ready to get at it, man. So, uh, without further ado, let's start taking everything apart and replace it with brand new, okay? Sounds good? All right, hold on a second. Let me set you down. All right, looks like you can probably see the tire right there. And um, I'm using air tools. I know that some people don't have air tools, but I have them and I'm gonna use them. So there you go. All right, here we go. Now the car is already jacked up and on uh, jack stands. So that's why this can come up so easily. All right, so now all of our nuts are removed. We can take off our tire. Let's not break anything here. Yep, throw that over there. And as you can see, we have our uh, wheel assembly here, or uh, our brake assemblies right here. <clears throat> Let me get some light in here. And uh, so right here, this is that uh, brake caliper bolt that I was telling you about. Uh, the one with the uh, brake, brake disc uh, piece, right, right here. All right, and um, <clears throat> let me see here. 
Uh, this right here is your brick bleed screw. And these right here are your caliper bolts, okay? So once we take off those caliper bolts, this whole caliper is just gonna come right off, okay? But because I'm replacing this caliper with a brand new one, I'm gonna start here with these, um, with this banjo bolt, so that way I can uh, just let that fluid come out because I already have new fluid, plus we have to uh, bleed everything anyways, okay? So <clears throat> I'm gonna see if this works with, uh, with the light up underneath there like this. Hopefully it does. And uh, let's get to it, man. So like I said before, uh, I'm gonna take off this banjo bolt here and uh, I just need to find the right tool, which I didn't bring with me. That's okay. I got plenty of tools just sitting around. Too big, too big. Too big, too big. Too small, too small. And too small. All right, let me try to find the right one. Hold on. So for that little one, uh, that one is going to be an 11 millimeter. Now, normally you don't use 11s, but for some odd reason, in this case, we do. So there you go. We got some brake fluid coming out. Just gonna take that off right there. And uh, if we lose banjo bolts, it's not a big deal because we are replacing them. So no big deal. Set that aside. 18 millimeter here. Is that going the right way? There we go. I'm telling you, I need my brother-in-law to make this go a little faster with his speedy, speedy music and all that good stuff. Now, these pins right here, all these pins are, uh, they push in, they're mostly like guide pins. And where they mount up is on the actual caliper itself. That's the only place that they have threads is right there. So uh, <laughs> think about that next time you break really hard. And uh, that new caliper over there has new parts, so these parts can go in the trash. Or you save them for another project. Uh, my buddy Ricardo, he likes to save all of his nuts and bolts and stuff, so there you go. So that came right off, good job. That goes down there. Take my offset 18, that's gonna go right here. And then we're gonna go in a up position. Ugh. Now, like I said, you don't want to use the, um, the ratchet wrench for this because you might get it stuck. And uh, if that happens, that's, that's a bad time. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, these are on there. And uh, I'll show you all the rest on these here in a second this is this is uh, really bad like this uh vehicle came from new york so there's a crap ton of rust on this thing uh if you're going to change your brake pads only right you would leave these bolts on and you would slide your brake pads out through here you'd wiggle it and uh slide those out like this here and um there we go. Yep, see there's one right there and uh, they don't look very good. Uh, this thing has seen better days. Um, but I've been putting new parts on it here and there. So uh, eventually it'll be a nice new car. Eventually. So this bolt can go in the trash as well. 
unless we want to save it for something else like my buddy Ricardo would do. Take my wrench here, take off this guy here. Now this is your uh, caliper bracket uh, bolt, okay? All right, so let me show you something really quick. Uh, this, let me see here, here we go, block that light. So this bolt right here is getting caught up on that upper control arm, okay? So instead of trying to remove more stuff, all we're gonna do is unthread it. Let me cover that light. There we go. Uh, we're gonna unthread it as much as possible and then we're just gonna pull it out. Unthread, pull out, unthread, pull out. So that way uh, we can uh, we can unseat it, see? And this bolt will come out. You just gotta you know give it a couple shimmies here and there. And then uh, this caliper bracket comes right off. Uh, all right, and then uh, to take your rotor off, you're just gonna grab it and wiggle it a little bit. And uh, the reason why I bought a new rotor for this one is because uh, it's got a nice lip right here and it's not supposed to have a lip. So both sides on these have a really gnarly lip on there. So we definitely want to replace that. Uh, uh, so here we go. Here's your uh, wheel hub assembly. Uh, this is a uh, dust cover. This is for your uh, ABS. And uh, like I said, this thing will come out. You just have to fiddle with it a little bit here and there and uh, get that out. So let me go get the other one ready, the other uh, caliper ready, and I'll be right back, okay? Sounds good, give me a minute. All right, so now I got my parts here. Uh, I got my uh, disc brake grease, right? And uh, my hardware kit, my brake pads here. And uh, I just pulled this rotor out of the box. And um, every time you get a brand new rotor, what you will notice is that there is a film on there. And if you don't remove that film, uh, it'll gummy up your brake pads. So, real quick, I just take my little parts cleaner here, give it a little hit on one side, flip it over, and then hit it again on the other side. And that's, that's, that's it right there. It's real quick, it's real simple. Um, this is non-chlorinated brake, um, brake parts cleaner, so. Just like that. And uh, little pieces of red rag, I'm not worried about. It's gonna fly off anyways. So, first things first, Come over here, and then uh, we're gonna put this uh, uh, this brake disc on. There you go, brake disc is on. And uh, I thought it came supplied with new uh, new mounting hardware, but it doesn't. It comes stock with new um, this mounting hardware, but not these ones. So I'll have to reuse these ones, and also. Uh, to take this upper bolt off, I had to lift up the control arm so I can finagle it through there. Uh, it's still a really tight fit, but it did come out, so we're just going to have to give it some more shimmy action so it'll come out. And uh, as stupid as this sounds, sometimes what I'll do is I'll even uh, cut a piece of this to make it easier for me to install it later if I ever have to do this uh, process again. So there we go, that went in, and we'll just push it back so that way it's kind of flush, right? And then uh, we're gonna put on this bracket here with these two bolts, and um, we're gonna cinch them down with some German torque, a little good and tight, and then um, we're gonna put on the caliper. All right, so let me set you down real quick so I can do all this because I need two hands. <laughs> Give me just a second. Let's see here. Right there, is that good? I think that's right. That should be good. Here's my light here. And uh, I can lower this jack here because we got jack stands. Ugh. 
remove my brake parts cleaner. Take this guy. Now you'll see this here. You see how it's rounded right here like this? That's the contour of the rotor and that's what you wanna marry up there. So uh, move this guy a little bit. This goes down there. Uh -huh. Make sure that's loose. There's one right there started, and then I uh, will move this guy down here and get him started. Now the whole time my brake line's been leaking, so the crappy part is there's a little tool that they sell. It's a um, a block, a uh, like it's like a plastic cap, and uh, all it does is uh, prevent fluid from coming out. So these are the pins that I was telling you about. They only have thread on one little side, and then the rest is just like a guide pin. So I'm gonna set those aside over here, because they're gonna be in my way. And then I can get my fancy ratchet wrench over here and uh, tighten up these bolts. Now, after you put this on with this, this bracket, I mean, after you put this bracket on, you can then put your brake pads in there uh, and they will be held in place with, um, with clips. And the silly part is, this is the only thing that holds that brake rotor on. <laughs> as weird as that seems, like this brake, this piece here is the only thing that prevents this piece here from coming off. So it's, 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 to me, it's really scary, <laughs> but you know, whatever. I'm not an engineer, so I don't know this stuff. So like I said, the reason I do this is because one, I cannot get a socket in there. And uh, two, my rancher wrench won't fit. See, look, yeah, it's too big. But this one works just fine. And then uh, once I get it there, give it a couple of pops. That's good enough for me. And then we'll get this one going. Yep, that's good enough for me as well. All right, so then I grab my brake pads. Here's my brake pads, okay? So as you can see, they're really rough on the edges here. And uh, uh, someone once told me that uh, you take them and you rub them together like this, try to make them smooth because that'll make your brake pads and your uh, and your rotor last longer. I have no idea if that's true or not, but I've been doing it like that for years and uh, I haven't had any problems yet, so that's good. Uh, so with these clips here, they come supplied with, uh, with the brake pads there. And uh, what these are made for is this is a wear indicator. So that goes like this here on your brake pad there just like that. And what that does is, as soon as this brake pad, let me see, as soon as this brake pad starts wearing down, it'll hit this guy right here, and you'll start hearing a noise, like a really loud noise, okay? And uh, that just lets you know that, hey, it's time to replace those brakes, homie. So what we do is, I test fit it first, okay? Make sure it fits, fits in there good. All right, now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take it apart. And you only need one of those, you don't need two of those. Uh, I know that some people will say you need two, but you really don't, you need just one. So I got my, uh, my uh, brake lubricant here, All right? So this is uh, disc brake stuff. They sell this to you at AutoZone uh, or El Vato Zone for, um, in a little packet. And uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna just rub all that over the little end pieces here right and that's going to prevent any unnecessary squeakage yeah just don't get it on the pad get it on the back get it on the sides but not on the pad itself because it'll gummy up your pad real bad sounds good sounds good all right so that's in there got my little clip here put my clip back on 
Okay. And then I'm going to put it on the outside of the clip because I want that to be lubricated too because it's just playing metal on metal, you know, and, and this will protect the metal on metal. Also, you see the back of this is metal, right? So I'm going to put a little bit on the back of there too just because metal on metal, you don't want that. And it'll prevent uh, moisture from staying on this one piece of metal. So I use it very liberally. There you go. See, nice and greased up. Then I take this here. Once again, the curvature of the rotor disc is the same curvature as the brake pad. So you're going to slide that in here. Put that over here like this. That's it. Look at that. That's as easy as that is right there. I know it sounds crazy, but it is that easy. Put a little more grease on there, right? On the edge like this here. And then we're gonna put this clip on here. Oh, wait a minute, wrong way. No, that was the right way. Oh no, it goes on this side, I'm sorry, my bad. Now sometimes it doesn't matter what side you put them on, but other times in other applications it does because it won't fit a certain way. So I'm going to loop this up generously here. I'm going to put this guy over here. See how it fits in there nice and pretty like? Let me see. Can you see that right there? Nice and pretty like? All right. Now I'm going to grease it up because I like everything greasy. <laughs> And then also on the back part, because like I said, this is uh, straight metal here and uh, you just want to cover it up with something to protect it from corroding. Now this grease, like, it's not a necessity, so don't feel like you have to go buy a tub like me. Uh, it's not a necessity, it's kind of just one of those things like it's nice to have kind of thing. All right. So then this, once again, curvature, right? That's gonna go this way. This goes in the groove, and then this goes in the bottom groove, just like that. All right, now we get our caliper. Oh, this bad boy's heavy. And uh, our guide pins, which are sitting over there. And the way this works is, have these boots right here. See these boots right here? These boots are gonna get compressed into this guide pin. So we put it over like that. And this here, these are all the way depressed, okay? When you take them off of your car, when you go to do a brake change, you're gonna wanna compress that piston. And the best way to do that, I found, is to uh, open up the master cylinder reservoir and then use a C-clamp to push each one of these down. Now what's gonna, what that's gonna do is it's gonna make all your fluid travel back to your reservoir. So, uh, if you're worried about over spillage or anything, you might want to put like a towel or something over there, uh, a couple of rags and whatnot, so that way it doesn't uh, spill over on you. Okay, so now I'm resituating these boots. I'm going to put this in here. And then, as I start it, those that clip's going to be held in place right there. That's it right there. Just gonna tighten her down with my uh, with my ratchet wrench. Yes, sir. Getting her done. Getting her done. Uh, yep. Pretty good and tight. Now, I just want to let you know that you smacking the wrench like that with your hand uh, is not good for your hand. It will give you, uh, I believe it's carpal tunnel later on, later on down the road. Uh, but I've been doing it for years, and so I don't care what anybody tells me. But I'm just warning you because maybe you've never done this before, and, and you're looking at me like, oh, what are you doing? So this here still has the banjo bolt on it. 
So we're gonna need to take that banjo bolt off. And uh, best way to do that is a screwdriver. And uh, I will need to find one floating around maybe. Maybe not. Uh, so also you can uh, hit it with something. And uh, sometimes uh, that'll make it come off. Not in this case though, but sometimes. You grab a screwdriver. Ugh. You know, it's funny when you need a screwdriver, you can never find one. Or when you need a Phillips head screwdriver, all you find are flat tip screwdrivers. Really weird how that works. So let me see here. Take this guy here, put it in, wiggle it around, and there she goes. So best thing to do is clean this off as best as possible. Uh, you don't want any crud between your banjo bolt and your uh, and your product. Okay. So then we take this banjo bolt here. It's got two sides. It's got a flat side and a rounded side. And uh, the flat side always goes toward uh, the product. So in our case, banjo bolt goes on the caliper here, right? And uh, put your other banjo bolt, your other banjo bolt goes on here, flat side underneath the bolt head, okay? So now you got one washer on one side, your line, and then your other banjo bolt on the other side. Now these are just basically crush washers, okay? So if you understand that term, crush washer, instead of banjo bolt, <laughs> whatever makes you feel better. <clears throat> so lucky us, this is still a number 11, uh, a number 11. Uh, this caliper actually has a notch in there and uh, it will tell you which way this line sits. So you can see it only moves this much and that's what you want. You wanna put it in the notch cause that's where it needs to be, right? And then we're gonna just cinch it down real good. Yep. And that banjo bolt's really special because what happens is it, it's got a, a, a through hole and uh, it allows fluid to move through the bolt. All right. So there you go. So now we got new brake pads, new caliper, new caliper bracket, new rotor, and uh, we're ready to rock and roll. Okay, so with that being said, uh, now you're looking at um, all new parts. Okay, so let me just move back here. So, uh, ugh. All new parts okay and um, that didn't take very long it probably took us maybe like 15 20 minutes uh, it was real simple real easy to do and uh, like I said uh, if I can do it anybody can do it and um, changing your brake pads and your caliper that's that's stuff you should know um, maybe not in depth as I do stuff but um, how much money you think you save changing your own brake pads? Uh, I know that for this in particular vehicle, uh, brake pads are anywhere between minimum $20, maximum $70. And if you turn around and pay somebody uh, to do this job, well, now you're looking at even more money. So it could be anywhere between a $200 job, just depending on what you got going on. And just don't think for a second that just because you're replacing brake pads that um, they're not going to charge you more for doing a caliper and a caliper bracket as well because they will. Uh, these shops, they got to make their money. And uh, especially if they buy their parts on Rock Auto as well, now they're making tons of money off of you. So the best thing to do is try to learn to do this stuff yourself and um, it'll go by a lot smoother. Uh, I'm gonna make another video later on because uh, I'm the only one here right now and uh, I can't do a brake bleed by myself I mean I can but I got to buy a special tool and yada 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 So I'm not even trying to worry about all that uh, So I'll just do another video later on uh, showing you how to do a brake bleed uh, a complete brake bleed uh, taking off the tire method because I feel uh, the closer you get into the project the easier it is for you to uh, 
enjoy or I'm sorry uh, the easier it is for you to um, uh, do it's easier to do because uh, you can get out of tools and everything else it's just real easy okay uh, so I'm gonna try to go ahead at this video real quick and uh, like I said man we are done here you know let me show you real quick so uh, right now you have your uh, your brand new rotor here and you know all your brand new stuff here with your brand new banjo bolt and whatnot uh, all that stuff over there is gonna be trash you know and um, yeah man so uh, hopefully you guys learned something. Uh, hopefully this helps somebody out, somebody out there in, in you know the uh, in the interwebs machine. And um, well, as always, man, if I can do it, you can do it. You guys have a good evening. See you later, Mr. Pyro. Out. Uh, real quick, <clears throat> I just remembered a pro tip uh, that if you compress your pistons on your caliper and make the fluid travel from the caliper all the way back into the master cylinder, you can replace your brakes without ever needing to replace or uh, to bleed your brake system. All you do is uh, you put everything back together, you cap the master cylinder again, and then you pump the brakes, good to go. Done deal, you don't even have to uh, bleed the system. That's all I got for you, okay, bye.